Bouncing the chairs. Hi, everyone. Welcome to um, our Young Makers Mentoring Session. And this time, it is on sharing and documentation, which is really important, almost just as important as making itself. Um, and we have some special guests with us today. It'll be a fun conversation in the office. Um, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Cool. I'm Steve Davy. I'm the Director of Education and Communications for Maker Ed. And I'm Nancy Rink. I'm the Program Coordinator here for Maker Ed. And I'm Stephanie Chang, and I'm the Director of Youth Engagement for Maker Ed. And we'll get started. Um, so what should youth be sharing um, while they're making? I think uh, the most important thing is for them to share their ideas, their, their hopes, their dreams, their stories, that sort of thing. And so as a fundamental way of approaching documentation and making it child-centered, I love having things like this or you know this any notebooks or paper of any form be kind of a fundamental aspect of like capture what you're thinking mm -hmm. um, keep it uh, if you develop that habit early on you've got this record of ideas um, and process yeah but um, it's a good place for things to start so that's what I think fundamentally you should start with writing and drawing yeah recording on paper is such a great tool I think they should be sharing everything about the process you know the mistakes that have been made. You know, what went well, what went right, what are they hoping for, what were they not hoping for, Yeah, everything. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think also it's fun It's fun to actually invite play and investigation with materials, actual literal time to play. Mm -hmm. And of course, when children work with materials, pretty much no matter what age, they start to tell stories or think of things. And mm -hmm. then you can capture that moment, have them go to paper and write down what they were excited about, what mm -hmm. they'd like to do, what they'd like to make, and then maybe even draw it. Mm -hmm. um, I like to use the language of my former students. Uh, was, uh, you know, if you could prototype something, what kind of materials would you want? Or if you can make something, mm -hmm. what do you think you might need? You can get great diagrams of things with little arrows pointing at what, what part is what and things <laughs> like that. Uh, it's priceless. And then they yeah. keep that over years. And if you have a notebook, it doesn't matter whether it's an official notebook or, or if it's a three ring binder or something that they keep over time, you can share, you can show the, their progress in sketches and their drawing ability and their yeah. writing ability over time. And with children, writing ability and drawing ability really explodes rather quickly if it's Absolutely. regularly used. Yeah. So we mentioned telling a story and I think oftentimes whenever we're talking about making and we emphasize the process of making, we also um, encourage people to tell their story because that's a really exciting thing that doesn't necessarily isn't necessarily seen in the final product. So um, what are tips on how to tell your story other than writing things down and making sketches? What else do they need to capture? Well, they can capture the story in many different ways. They don't have to write it down. They can actually act it out. Um, video is now ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually do quite a bit with just uh, story uh, pictures mm -hmm. and, and actually captioning pictures. Um, publishing is good. Um, yeah, I mean, we're still on this kind of imaginative narrative story type idea. But um, there's also uh, the story of what they're making could be used for, mm -hmm. or, or their own personal story of how they discovered it or thought of it. Mm -hmm. So a more personal um, narrative about, OK, this is how I thought about it. Who, this is who I got help from. And then you can work towards this sense of, um, I'm telling the story so that others can do it. Mm -hmm. So it's that maker culture of, here's what I did, and here's what didn't work, and here's what I did. Um, you can establish that very early. Kids will take that on as a, a great responsibility when they realize they could actually be teaching adults or their peers something mm -hmm. cool or Absolutely. showing them something cool as an inspirational point. Um, it's a really cool approach. Yeah. And I feel like we are kind of talking about two things that happen in parallel. One is like the capture of the experience, whether it's in writing or pictures or video or absolutely anything. And that capturing can obviously take place by the youth or the kid or the maker, him or herself, but also by other people involved. So parents, mentors, teachers, fellow makers, friends can also take part in capturing all of that. And then there's kind of the reflection, which is the telling of the story and making sense of it all. Um, and being able to reflect on what has happened and what mistakes were made, and then ultimately creating really a kind of fantastic narrative from it, no matter what the final product might look like. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's the imaginative narrative or the process narrative. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Steve's done a ton of work in documentation um, at his past positions and now, definitely. Um, so what are some tips and strategies for practice? Uh, tips, strategies, and practices for documenting your work? Well, um, 
documentation can be a wonderful practice for giving you an excuse to be a little restrained and giving more power and agency to children. So when you put yourself behind the camera and you are showing your attention towards their process with mm -hmm. the camera mm -hmm. and you are putting it on the process and when they're engaged and when they're speaking, the children or young adults, um, you're showing what you're noticing about them and you can actually simultaneously ask questions about what's going on. So you're you're paying attention to the process and what's going on, but you're not the one who's the ultimate authority about telling what's going on. Mm. Now, it also puts you in a position to recognize when there are appropriate times to collaborate or, mm -hmm. or jump in or, oh, I would love to do that or, you know. So, and also you can document. Um, you can actually use documentation as a tool to get a parent more engaged mm -hmm. or, if necessary, less engaged in the process. Ah, so, that's you know, a nice tip. <laughs> you know, I, I love being able to, I, I'm notorious for handing my camera to anybody, including young children. And if, like, you got a young sibling around yeah. maybe not as, who may or may not be as engaged, yeah. I love to put cameras in the hands. You know, they got little stuff that they can put around their necks, so it's yeah. a problem they can count. But four-year-olds and three-year-olds with a camera yeah. walking around, uh, you'll get pictures you never would have imagined. They have the best mm -hmm. Seconds. They do. Well, they tend to take pictures of things really close. It's, it's crazy. It's like like you get these pictures back, and they're like at different angles, and they're really close. They're like really, they they see the world in a very different way in some yeah. ways, and they reflect that through the camera. So I love that kind of fascinating um, idea. I'm still trying to figure out what they're teaching me about that, about, yeah. about the documentation process. But so that's a tip. You can use documentation to kind of be there and not there. Mm -hmm. um, one way to help encourage that I'm capturing the process kind of idea is to, is to just simply take your attention and the camera away if they're mugging for the camera. Mm. Um, I find better pictures to be the ones that are most spontaneous and natural. Yeah. I'm not opposed to the final picture of somebody holding up the picture and you know doing this kind of thing that, that you see all the time. Like yep. I made this kind of stuff. It's fine. It's powerful for some people, and certainly it is powerful to see a child looking directly at the camera. Mm -hmm. But when you're capturing the process, you really want to see that engagement, you want to see that struggle, you want mm -hmm. to capture those things. Um, yeah, so that's one tip. You got anything in your work? Oh, man. Hmm. Um, I don't want to dominate. <laughs> <laughs> could go on forever. I love this. Uh, yeah. Tips for doc I really like your, you know, your tip say that it's really great to see it from the kid's perspective and, you know, handing them a camera, hand handing them the tool, just letting them go wild with whatever, you know, whatever they're using. If it's a notebook, you know, if it's a camera, it's just really great to see from a di different perspective because you just never, you know, as an adult, you never know, you can never guess what they're going to show. Yeah. And so yeah. I think that's a really, really great tip yeah. to do. Um, I like using um, groups. I like pairing up, you know. Yeah. Um, maybe if, if the kid's shy, pairing them up with someone else mm -hmm. and like, getting them to go around with a group. And it, I think okay. it changes, you know, it's different from individual an individual perspective versus a group perspective. So I do like to pair kids up together. That's a great idea. Okay. And I think it's interesting, too, what we were saying about giving the camera to the kids, whether they're taking pictures of others or taking pictures of their own work. Um, something that we've noticed, I think, is that sometimes, though, as like a aside, if you're really in flow and you're working really hard on something, especially if it's your own project, you're not necessarily going to stop step back and take a picture of it or yeah. write about it or think about it and reflect on it in that moment. And so um, a suggestion from a lot of people is to utilize cameras, uh, video cameras especially, is to set something up on the side and capture the mm -hmm. whole process so mm -hmm. that it's all in there. Absolutely. Uh, we all, or many people now, we have in our pockets recorders that are cameras and you know, like a, a audio recorder as well. Now, if you ever have a, an, a situation where things aren't looking great for lighting or you don't have permission for or, you, or it makes somebody uncomfortable to take mm -hmm. pictures of people, uh, remember that you can also, besides the behind-the-head pictures or, mm -hmm. the, or the get get the focused hand pictures. Yeah. Um, and remind yourself to take wide pictures of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Remind yourself these are basic documentation tips, but take the picture of the setup and take a picture of the aftermath. Mm -hmm. Now, what does the mess look like before and after? What does the mess look like during or how organized was it before or maybe even afterwards, depending on the process? Yeah. But um, don't forget to get the close in the hands. They're going to be tremendously useful for you and, mm -hmm. and they allow you to kind of work freely with this sense of material and detail. Um, so that's a good, nice thing to consider. The wide shots, the medium shots, um, Capturing just the words and audio, if you get children's voices and quotes, that can be a, every bit as powerful as a, a clip of video or a picture. Mm -hmm. um, a, a nice quote 
the, by a child, mm -hmm. or especially when they're working together. Yeah. The kind of things absolutely. that come up when they're collaborating, or the kind of stories they tell while they're making things. So. Or tell each other. <laughs> yeah. And for that, you can record it on audio, or you, another mm -hmm. form of documentation is not have any sort of recording other than the notebook itself. And so you're around, and you're just kind of like writing down what you observe mm -hmm. and try it sometime. If you're yeah. overly reliant on documentation, the notebook can be really liberating because you will it'll make you look differently at the process. Mm -hmm. I think absolutely. that's the power of documentation in general. It gives you yourself another perspective to, about what's going on. Absolutely. Um, so if you try different modes, each mode will share some new, uh, something new about what's going on with the kids. Definitely. Yeah. I think it's really important too, in addition to the angles that you might use, is to take pictures of the whole process, which you were mentioning, the setup, the breakdown, the messes, and all the mistakes in between. I think we tend to not remember to take pictures of those mistakes. It's not even necessarily like purposeful that we avoid taking pictures of it. We just don't think about it because yeah, yeah. when you make a mistake, you want to move on and fix it right and away, improve yeah. it. Um, but taking pictures of those really helps with telling your story and um, with catching the whole process. Another thing that documentation is really useful for is that a lot of times if a child is working with materials that they can't keep or take home with mm, them, absolutely. or they built something that has to be temporary, um, they'll be very reassured just to know that it's been captured, like yeah. you've taken yeah. a picture of it. So you yeah. get their final thing, and you're like, all right. And I always like to do this. Do you mind if I take a picture of what you made here? I would love to show it to other people. Is that OK with you? And they're like, oh. <laughs> It's <laughs> this power that you're suggestion. giving them also. But it's a simple it's a simple like little shift of authority, in a sense. And you're like, I value this. Yeah. I pay attention. But do you want to keep it private, or do you want to? I've seldom had a kid say no, but it has happened. Yeah. But you're giving them that choice, and you're actually sh saying, like, this is valuable. I want to show other people this. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, you don't have to fake it, because you know, usually it's like something really, really cool, so you're in there. Right? <laughs> and you can exaggerate it. And then you could say, ah, oh, you know, maybe you should take some pictures of this, too. And so yeah. you hand the camera over, or, or the phone over, or whatever you're using. That's great. And then you ask questions. Mm -hmm. What did you encounter in this that you didn't expect? Um, yeah. Tell me something about the materials that you used. Uh, what would you make if you what would you, if you had more things? What would you need? Or yeah. if you were to share this, what you made with other people, how would you present it? You mm -hmm. know, like start to learn from their approaches, and mm -hmm. they will have answers. Yeah, I like asking them what their favorite part of what they made mm -hmm. is, um, or if they're working with each other, what they each did, because mm -hmm. that's very mm -hmm. interesting. And some of them will be really excited to tell you, and some won't. Um, there's also, if they are sketching down their original ideas or brainstorming a list, it's really neat to compare what their product looks like, whether it's final or not, to what their original idea looks like. Sometimes it matches amazingly well, and sometimes it's totally different, yeah. but that whole process is really great. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, a lot of young makers work on these projects over the course of three to four months, and ultimately their goal is to showcase it at an event, sometimes Maker Faire, sometimes smaller, sometimes a town festival. Um, and the process really is really important. Um, so what should youth expect to show off at these events? What they love to do uh, and what they've loved to make. I mean, it doesn't matter what stage they are at in it, but if they've been invested and they're really enthusiastic about it, that's the most yeah. important thing. What, what they're proud of. Yeah. So I think Great. I think when they want to hang around and talk about it, no matter what it is, uh, that's that's the biggest straw right there. Yeah. It doesn't. It could be extremely technical. It can be not. It could be extremely finished, or it could be mm -hmm. a prototype in progress. But mm -hmm. if they know it love it, or if they've got a good story of collaboration. I mean, there's beautiful things that are done individually with, with their peers, um, stuff that we've seen that have been fantastic family collaborations. Yes. That's always a great story. Yeah, so, um, you know, so when you got a whole family kind of gathering it, uh, I'd love to see what, you know, what does the mom say versus the, <laughs> the young daughter, you know, what is the dad or the son or whatever guardian situation right. you have going on. Um, it's nice when you see that whole family collaboration, or sibling collaboration, or young maker collaboration coming Definitely. together or something. So, Definitely. But, but having them love it. Good, yeah. great. Yeah. I think too, even if it if it is a family that's perfect, if it's like an after school group or a um, an extracurricular group, it's always fun to hear the opinions of the teacher or facilitator or lead coordinator because um, there's often the oh my gosh, I had no idea what it was going to look like last <laughs> week, but right now it looks amazing. <laughs> So really what Steve said, I think sharing passions, sharing processes, those are really important. And does that differ for different age groups or skill levels? You know, that's kind of the cool thing about Maker Faire is that when you're a maker there, you're a maker mm -hmm. regardless of your age. And I think that it starts to transcend age boundaries. You know, you see the 
the most experienced of us and the youngest mm -hmm. of us kind of coming together together in, the, in this mm -hmm. passion. So I don't see a huge difference in ages there. I, mean, I certainly see more opportunities for independence and outlets um, mm -hmm. for blogging and, and things like that as right. you get older and are more experienced, um, and certainly more autonomy. But I've seen young kids in particular completely own maker share. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, they're they're there, they're makers. It's uh, a lot, it's funny they, they'll reach an age, an age where they don't want to be identified as necessarily young yeah, makers. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's say developing makers or just just playing the next generation. Next generation. <laughs> age, <laughs> age, no matter what you say, next but, gen but really just saying, wow, you know. We believe at the Maker Ed very fundamentally that children are born makers. Um, it's a matter of what happens to the natural words, whether or not that lasts or is, is nurtured. Um, is nurtured. Too, They're given the space. Too often it's shut down. Um, it can be reawakened in anybody at any time. It's not, never too late. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. And I think um, I totally agree with you, Steve. It doesn't matter how skilled or how unskilled, whatever that really means. Um, or what, how old or young they are, there's always something for them to show. Um, and we've even talked about often that even if there isn't something, some significant project that they've been working on, they can always bring something small and interactive. And that's just as good because they can engage the visitors and others mm -hmm. in making something together. Um, and that's a really fun experience. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out the language for this. Maybe you can do it out loud here. But I mean, there's show and tell, which is fine, but then there is engagement, which is so much more meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, so if you bring something to show and show off, great, tell a story about it or anything, but if you bring something that invites interaction or mm -hmm. invites the questions or invites the process or is a game that somebody can play or um, can be modified and changed, um, it's a step above. It's maybe, a step it's a, maybe it's a show and tell and do. It's, a <laughs> it's, a, it's, an in, it's an invite and engage. Yeah, uh, would be would be uh, I think a, a better goal than show and tell. Why well, still find a show something cool though? Yeah, so, yeah. So that's great. I think that's a good thought because it's both a show and tell, but ultimately everything that you're doing is to invite and engage sure. others. Sure. Yeah. And inspire, invite, engage, inspire yeah. for sure. Yeah. Great. Well, awesome. Um, any other last strategies or secrets for documentation and sharing? Hmm. Well, uh, I like getting down at the table level for camera shots. I like the, the point of view of the materials and the face behind them kind of thing. So mm -hmm. um, getting a camera that allows that, uh, if you have a choice and you're getting a, uh, making the investment towards a, a better camera than what you might have for just your phone, um, a camera that has a tilting screen is super handy. Lets you get up, lets you get low. Okay. Also lets you kind of be stealth about your yeah. process because you can have it off to the side. Um, you know, <laughs> you can be monitoring the, the engagement, you know, get a good angle while you're still engaging. Yep. And then it takes this away from your face. Yes. So you can be documenting without having this barrier, um, which sometimes is useful, but at the times it's a little intimidating. Or if that child can't stop looking at the camera, which is sometimes the case, yep. then you can kind of take it off to the side and they will forget it. Yep. You could actually be talking to them, you could have it all to the side and hold it. So. Absolutely. Um, worthy investment to be able to get a camera. An increasing amount of uh, cameras have that flip screen option mm -hmm. to allow you get unique angles. Absolutely. So. And I would say too, as part of, especially as part of the reflection process, which is just as important, is to really leave enough time for debrief and for a chance to look through all those yeah. wonderful pictures Some and videos. Good good portion of time for that. And um, that will really draw out the highlights and the parts that the kids are excited about because they'll yes. start to really focus in on the photos that they love and the things that they love. So consider like an affair or a young maker's meeting. Mm -hmm. A child gets fired up over something that they see there. Mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with that energy? What do you do with it? Um, I would say let them know how excited you are mm -hmm. and ask them, can you write down what you were just sharing with me? Can yeah. you draw a picture? Can I see it next time? And then the next time you see them, for sure, like follow up. Did you bring your notebook? Yeah. You know, did you bring what you wrote down? And then you'll develop this culture that happened with my students where they would come back to me at lunch and they'd say, like, see, see, and they have something in here. And, and they would have worked on it all night. Or they, uh, but I could go f throughout the year and always just by asking for their notebook, I would see what they were thinking about, what they were doing. They'd come up excitedly and shared something that they want to build or make or build experiment around. So if you establish that culture of sort of that expectation of like, I really do care about what you're doing. I want to see it next time. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually, it's a beautiful way to actually start out meetings or, or to, for something to share during meetings. Absolutely. Pass yeah. them around. Kids sharing their notebooks with each other or their pictures of what they're doing. Absolutely. So. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. And I would say to try something different 
different tool of documentation every meeting, switch off. Yeah. It can really, you know, break up your, you know, if you're stuck, yeah. it'll be something different. Totally. So try something new every time. Yeah, and that's totally true. And I think some mediums will speak out to others and others. Yeah. So that works out really well too. Yeah. That's a great I idea. wonder, um, have, have you and your Young Makers experience so far had um, questions about, um, you know, what are the frequent questions that come up? I think you've probably covered most of them, but is there I anything that we haven't covered yet? Not yet. I think yeah. really often the challenge is just remembering to document, yeah. right? And it's uh, if it's a self-documentation, it's difficult to remember to stop and take a picture or leave enough time to write stuff down, right? Mm -hmm. The drawing and the sketching might come in as part of the process. So setting sort of those sorts of expectations is really important. Um, and then obviously if you if there are others available who happen to be around while making happens, they can certainly help with that documentation. But that, you know, presents a different viewpoint and perspective. So Absolutely. they are all valuable and they're all worthwhile and documenting is the is a really good thing to do because that really shows what you've been making too. Absolutely, and then we get to see the cool stuff. Yeah. Exactly. So. Well, thanks everyone. I hope yeah. that was a little helpful um, and we'll follow up with this in future sessions. Woohoo, documentation. <laughs> That was fun.